Welcome back to my Commodore 64 Demos Peak series of videos. I'm Martin Piper and in this video we're going to look at snow effects. Some snow effects will update a bitmap screen and some will most likely update animated character set information. So let's get into it. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. This first demo is the Waveform Christmas Hit demo disc, and I'll put a link in the debugging details text file. I'd also obviously commit that to source control. So. What we can notice immediately is that this screen has some falling snow and if we have a look at the graphics map debug view here, we can see very clearly that it's using a bitmap screen, multicolor bitmap screen. And the snow particles are falling down and we can see that the snow particles are dynamically updating the bitmap screen data. The character screen here that we can see in the graphics debug map, debug map there is mostly filled with A's up at the top of the screen and this screen data is in bitmap multicolor mode is actually one or two of the color components for the screen. So we can see that this snow effect doesn't really sparkle or twinkle as it falls down. This is the next screen it doesn't have any snow on it. Let's restart the demo. Now this first screen has a different background. It actually has some um, trees and hills in the background. It's still loading. There we go. Trees. Oh, and there's a little town in the background as well. But we can see here in the Commodore 64 view that the snow particles are twinkling there. And the snow particles in the debug bitmap view are not twinkling. So what's going on here? Well, if we have a look using the monitor view here, we can see the screen, in this case, the color data or two channels of the color data is using a repeating pattern of A at at A at at. And we can see that the other color channel, the third color channel in the real color RAM is consistent. It's using an exclamation mark. These character values correspond to different values in memory. We can see those different values there in the graphics map debug view. What we'll do is that we'll fill the top of the screen, the first few like five or six rows, and we can see that the snow particles are not twinkling. Let's fill it with a repeating pattern of three bytes. And there we go. Now we can see that the snow particles are twinkling between white and black. Let's fill it with some more colors. So um, white, red, and what is it like blue cyan. And we can see that the top few, few rows there of the particle effects for the snow were actually twinkling. Now this is, that was a bitmap screen that was being dynamically updated, but I also have a different demo, which I also call a Christmas demo because it's got snow in it and I've got source code for it as well, and I'll put the link to the source code in the uh, text file, the debugging notes text file as well. Here's the source code. So you can just see here, it's actually quite old source code. Uh, I think it uses quite a lot of magic numbers, which is not good practice. It's actually better to use um, proper label names, but it was you know, released back in what, 1991 or something like that. So. Uh, back in 1991, I did not have a cross compiler. I only had a, a local assembler or cross assembler rather. So the label names were a luxury. Let's put it like that. Now this demo, we can see here immediately that it's got some bouncing sprites, but we do have like a quite nice little um, variably updating uh, snow effect falling down. Now this is a multicolor text screen. So let's bring up uh, the debug graphics map here for text screens, and we'll have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Hmm. Okay, let's reopen that again so that we're all not so that we're not all zoomed in. Okay. 
So if we try and find uh, the screen data, oh gosh, where was it? I've already forgotten. It was a, oh yes, that's right. 3800 3800 in hex. So let's move that back down there. There we go, there's the screen. Now we're looking at it with the uh, lowercase ROM character set at the moment, but if I zoom in, we can see that the screen data here, because it's a text screen, it's actually using a sequence of characters for each column in, in sequence. So it starts off with at and it goes all the way down to, let's go back to the ROM character set, but the hex code character set wasn't really that readable, right? Um, it starts off at at up in the top left hand corner and it goes all the way down to uh, reverse Q, for example. The next column along, the next column along, if we go back to the, the wrong character set, the next column along, you can see that it's actually shifted down. So all of the vertical columns in the screen contain the same repeated background characters, but at different vertical offsets. That's what makes the snow look uh, quite nice and, and you know pseudo random, if you like. It's just each vertical column is shifted. Now, the character set data that we can see there is dynamically animating. And we're animating what is about 25 different characters. So that's 25 times eight bytes for the whole vertical strip of characters. But because each vertical column in the screen is using the same repeated characters, just with different vertical shifts or offsets, if you like, then the animated character sets will, the animated characters in the character set will just replicate all the way across the screen and just fill the screen with lots of animating snowflakes. Underneath the animating snowflakes, we can see some little wiggly trails and those wiggly trails are basically the, the horizontal wiggly trails for the different uh, snowflakes. And I've got several different snowflakes there there's like a pixel one, a two pixel one, and a three or four pixel one or whatever. And basically all of those snowflakes are all composited together each frame. And then we get this rather nice, nice little lovely effect. So at the cost of updating a few characters in the character set, we're actually able to fill the whole screen without too much time being used in terms of CPU time. And we can fill the rest of the screen, of course, with bouncing sprites which is always a nice thing to do. So these two effects, updating a bitmap screen or updating character set data, are two of the, the most common ways of animating kind of like falling particles or snow effects in a demo or actually in a game as well. So thank you very much for watching these uh, Commodore 64 retro demo peak videos if you like these kind of deep technical dives into graphical effects used on the Commodore 64 then please do consider liking or subscribing and a super thanks is always very much appreciated as is a subscription take care have a great day or evening or night wherever you are